When passion meets fear, we as filmmakers create nightmares, drawing you into the dark and learning together that we are not so different. The Highlands Horror Fest brings filmmakers and horror fans alike together to celebrate those fears and embrace the unexplainable. Sit tight, hold your breath, and whatever you do, do not turn out the lights. The Highlands Horror Fest Roadshow starts now. Hi there, I'm Justin Simmerly, and we're back for another installment of the Highlands Horror Fest Roadshow. We're here at the Atlantic Ale House, and tonight we'll be listening to Alan C. Lopez talk about directing talent in independent films. As you can see, we have quite the crowd here tonight, so it should be fun. Maybe we'll all learn something from Alan, have a few drinks, have a lot of fun. Let's get started. Hi there, I'm still Justin Simmerly, and as you can see, we are no longer at the Atlantic Ale House. Seems Mother Nature had different plans for the night as a torrential downpour started just as we were about to take the stage. So here we are, moved over to campus to the TV studio where alcohol is strictly prohibited. But still, we're here. I'm going to listen to Alan C. Lopez talk about directing actors in independent film. I'm going to drink this nice ice cold water from the refrigerator and uh, hopefully we can all learn something here tonight. All right, hi guys. Uh, a lot of you know me, some of you may not, but my name is Alan Lopez. My screen name is Alan C. Lopez, just to differentiate me, because <laughs> there's a lot of Alan Lopez's out there. But uh, this workshop is on directing actors, but more specifically, it's about uh, communicating with actors. And so I'm gonna go to this next slide here. Actually, before I even talk about this, the reason why Chucky's here is because I'm very nervous, right? And so I'm thinking, you know, if I get nervous, if I get intimidated by your beautiful faces, I'm just doing this to Chucky, he's fine. So, <laughs> um, so what is a film director? Wikipedia says, and bear with me, uh, I was always that kid in class that like got really nervous while reading out loud, so. Um, a film director is a person who controls a film's artistic and dramatic aspects and visualizes the screenplay while guiding the film crew and actors, and you can see I highlighted actors here, um, in the fulfillment of that vision. Now, that's an okay definition, but I think it's a little wordy, so I gave my own definition here. Uh, a film director is someone who unifies all aspects of film production, especially actors. And the reason why I specify especially actors is because I find that there's kind of an issue that I've observed on a lot of uh, independent sets that I've been a part of. So on this next slide. This is Amanda Sneed. This is Chris Ward. This is Shelby Minogue. This is Jacob Maurer. This is Ellie Bergner. She's one of the best actresses that I've ever worked with. Probably the best actress that I've ever worked with. And no, I'm not biased. He is an improvisational actor as well as a film and theater actor. Uh, worked with him uh, on one film, Midnight Red Light. An actress that I've worked with for a long time. I've worked with her in theater and I've also worked with her in film. Probably one of the first actors that I ever worked with I would consider professionally. She's an actress I've seen in a lot of films. I've worked in close proximity with her. I haven't quite worked with her yet, although I've given her some direction already. What helps me most is probably just like simple communication, which kind of sounds like dumb in a sense, because like, duh. Everyone's different, but for me specifically, uh, like communication, a conversation. Honestly, a clear goal on what my character is supposed to accomplish in the scene and probably the overall plot. I really do enjoy like communicating with the director. Um, as long as we have like really heavy conversations about character work, character arc, um, that kind of stuff, I feel like I can really get into my character better that way. What are your biggest pet peeves when it comes to direction? My, I guess my biggest pet peeve is, is little direction. Kind of the most simple like directing where it's like, be sadder, 
be a, be you know be be mad at this person. Oh, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but like not communicating. I don't I I don't think it helps if you think you're being like vague enough for the actor to figure it out on their own. So it's my biggest pet peeve when I I'm being directed and also when I watch other people being directed, it's uh, the lack of direction at all. So for example, I'll just say like the sad thing. So like you came up to me and you said, so for this scene, I want you to be sad. So, okay, take one, I'm sad, whatever that means. And then it's like cut, all right, be more sad. <sighs> okay. There was, there was one time or one, one project I worked on where between like each take, the director would pretty much just come up to me. I was just a two person cast, me and one other person. And every time they'd be like, yeah, yeah, just like keep in mind, you know, how you feel, what's going on, um, you know, think about like situation. It was like these very vague things. Uh, and I would just be like, yeah, okay. I, I was like, is it like, am I doing okay? <laughs> they kind of sit by and they're like, oh, well, what do you feel? And I'm like, this. And they're like, okay, well, you know, just keep at it. And I'm like, what What are you looking for? When somebody expresses to me, okay, go into this scene, you feel blank. And I'm like, it, it gives me like not really anything to work with. Can you elaborate? And then they go away. And it's like, I didn't get it, okay. I'm more sad. Then they come back. That's a little too much. Then you didn't, you didn't tell me. <laughs> I love when they give me creative freedom to an extent. I don't want to be just making this character out of thin air, and I want to make sure it goes with what the director's original vision was. Knowing my lines is one thing, but like me having to interpret those lines in a way that the director wants to come up, like that's so, like you need to communicate with that. Like I've been to so many shoots where sometimes like I'm reading a line and I'm like, how is my character going to say this? Like. I thought you even brought it up. You were just like, uh, it doesn't always, if you see bad acting, it doesn't even mean it's always on the actor's part at all. A lot of times it could be bad directing. Everyone talks about equipment all the time. And then no one talks to me. <laughs> they spend like three hours, you know, trying to figure out equipment and get everything to work. And then they're like, all right, you have your lines, right? All right, go. And you're like, you, did, you, well, didn't, you didn't tell me anything. You didn't talk to me. <laughs> what do you, you didn't mean? tell me what to do. <laughs> Learn the lines and the character will come. I heard that several times. I'm like, that's, that's not that's true. That's not true. I... Like, it's like, I get it. Like, it's fucking scary to like walk up to yeah. an actor and be like, let's have a conversation about this. Or, and, but the thing is, is like, actors are probably just as scared. They're that's, like spiders or whatever. It's like, it's that, like they're just as scared of yeah. you. Like, I, yeah, right as you said that, I was like, it's the same. They're like, yep. It's like two people that have a crush on each other, but they're both <laughs> too shy to say it. Do it. Yeah, that's hilarious. That's, yeah, it goes, yeah. it goes both ways. Just admit, admit your love for the other. Yeah. And, just you know, kiss. Hold each other's hand. Just yes. kiss. Just, just kiss, kiss and everything will go so smooth. That's what we did yep. for Midnight Red Exactly. Life, so. Dude, we, yeah. um, we full out made out. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that table work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is the issue at hand that I've uh, observed a lot. And something I wanna say before I go to the next slide is I wanna make it like super clear that um, in no way am I saying that my, what I found works for me, in no way that I, am I saying that that's gonna work for you. Uh, you guys could very well take, I don't know, something from this and find your own way, um, your own craft from what I'm saying. But this is really what works for me and I've found that actors really appreciate it. I'll go ahead to the next slide. So I kind of have, I think it's four steps here. Uh, so step one is learn to act. And when I say that, a lot of people get immediately scared or they're like, that's bullshit, dude. I'm not learning to act just to direct or whatever. But it's not really what I mean. I don't want you to take it on surface level. Um, I do recommend at least trying it, right? And that might be nerve-wracking uh, to some of you, but uh, I myself, um, I actually have a degree in theater as well as a degree, a degree in uh, media communications, RTVF. Um, so I come from a background of kind of both. 
and I actually really recommend at least taking a few acting classes to at the very least kind of learn the language of an actor. So just like any job, right, you have terms that you may not know unless you put in the effort to kind of learn them, right? And some of these terms are like beats, tactics, and goals. Goals, in my opinion, are the most important ones. Like in every screenplay, every character, every main character should have a goal that they're trying to achieve. And that may seem like, like well, duh, right? But there are actually a lot of movies where, I've, I, even Hollywood films, where I feel like goals just aren't, they're just not specific enough or they're just not clear enough, right? We don't really know what those characters want sometimes. And sometimes that may be the point, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's kind of an oversight. But the way characters accomplish those goals are tactics, right? We use tactics every day to do the things that we want to do. So uh, that kind of brings me into, uh, well, we have beats as well. A lot of people think a beat is kind of like a pause, but at least in the world of theater, which I've kind of translated that to uh, filmmaking, in the world of theater, beats are actually not a pause. It's kind of a shift in tactics, and it can be a pause for some actors, but for some, uh, actors, it's, it's not. It's literally just a, a change in how they're saying something, right? You can, you can say one sentence one way where it's like to bribe someone. That's a tactic, right? So you could say a line that sounds very much like manipulative, like you're trying to bribe someone into doing something for you, or you could change that tactic to plead. That's a little more desperate, right? Person could say the same exact line, but change their tactic to accomplish their goal, right? And then that kind of brings me into the variety in acting, right? Which is uh, kind of the spice of acting, in my opinion, and also the spice of your direction. Um, so if you have a clear and concise goal with lots of variety, lots of shifting tactics with your actors, and you've explained that to everyone, right? Then you're gonna get a far better performance, and then by proxy, your directing is gonna look a lot better and people are gonna wanna work with you more. So every, every person that you saw in that video, by the way, is actually, they're all my friends. You know, I met them, most of them actually, no, actually all of them, now that I'm thinking about it, um, I met all of them through acting, and they're all of my friends, my, co my closest friends. They like working with me, and I love working with them, and that should be kind of your goal as a director, in my opinion, is you want to be friends with these people. You want to work with them. Make them want to work with you you know, and then in turn you get a good friendship that's gonna last, you know. So, learn to act doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be good at acting, right? It just means maybe you should learn the lingo, maybe you should, you know, it's the same with every other aspect of filmmaking. Like, if you're a director, you kinda need to know, you kinda need to know a little bit about everything, you know, and that includes acting. So, don't skip over that. So, step two, this is very important. Table work slash character research. Okay, so if you're writing a screenplay, right, they say if you're not doing research, you're not doing it right. Well, it's the same way for actors. And research doesn't mean that you go read a book or, or that you look up some stuff online. Sometimes it means that, but a lot of times research just means that you communicate with your actors before you start shooting. And if you feel like you don't have time to do that, make time. Everybody's going to be exhausted anyway. So. No one will care unless your actors are dis unless your characters are distinct, including actors. Actors can a lot of time, uh, a lot of the time, get kind of discouraged if a character is stale or they feel like they can't connect to the character um, in a meaningful way. And you might even feel that way too. You might be directing something that you didn't necessarily write, so you're not necessarily passionate about it. You might have fallen into it. Somebody might have asked you to do it. Well, it's kind of up to you and your actors to find something that sparks that inspiration for you guys. So the way I suggest doing that is learn how your actors speak. I'm talking person to person. I'm not talking the character just yet. But learn how your actors speak, right? Uh, the more accurately you can replicate how someone speaks, the more clearly you can communicate with them. Because I have a very specific way of, of talking, right? just like all of you have a very, very specific way of talking, okay? That means if I, if I sarcastically say, 
damn, I fucking hate you, <laughs> right? If I say that sarcastically, not everybody in this room is going to understand that I'm saying that sarcastically, right? I mean, they might walk out of here and go, man, that guy was a dick. Why did he hate us so much? <laughs> like, but that's not what I'm saying at all. And just, but let's say I was an actor and you guys were my directors. If you guys know me and you know how I talk, then you understand like, oh, he's being sarcastic. Sarcasm may be the best way to get through to me, right? So learn how your actors speak. Um, also, your characters are not you, even if you wrote them as like a character, as like a, a self-insert. Your characters still are not you, and here, here's why. Or they're also not the actor in question. Because when you write a character or you're directing a character, there might be aspects of yourself in them, right? But it's a collaborative process, right? You want to include your actor and mold the character together. You really can't. You can't decide what this character was for yourself and then just try your best to superimpose or you know, use your psychic abilities to be like, this is the character. This, it's just not going to work, right? So you really need to communicate with your actor and you need to find the character as a team, right? Your actor might have a completely different perspective on this character that you, than you might have anticipated, right? So, and also, realistic to you isn't always realistic for your character, right? This is, again, where like character research, table work, comes into play, right? So, let's say, right now, I'm pretty nervous, right? I'm talking to a bunch of people, some, of, some that I know, some that I don't. I'm very nervous right now. What's realistic for me to do is if I, let's say, make a joke that bombs, Okay, I'm gonna quickly move past it and just hope that none of you guys realized it was a joke because I don't want you guys to think that I bombed it, right? But there might be a character out there who bombs a joke and then waits for the laughter. Why, you think like, that's not realistic, I would never do that. Yeah, sure, you may not do that, but that character might do that. And that, that might be hard to watch, right? But it's the character, it's not you, and it's not the actor. And if you've come to a good uh, middle ground with your actors in that regard, then it makes for a better performance. So, uh, step three, be patient. This is something that is uh, not easy to do. Um, being patient doesn't just mean being patient with your actor. It also means uh, being patient with yourself. Um, something that I do a lot of the time, if, if an actor has a question, and I don't have an answer, I will literally tell them, hang on, I'm choosing words, and I will literally like, I'll shut down, I'll go to a corner, something, and I'll start thinking, you know. Part of your job as a director is, is to problem solve, and this is also problem solving, right? So you'll say, hang on, I'm choosing words, go off, do your own thing, right? Figure it out, you let your actor know, like, I don't have an answer right now, I will get to you here in a second, or, if it gets to the point where like you genuinely can't come up with an answer, pull your actor aside. You know, make time to talk to them, right? I know time crunch is a big thing for a lot of you, and that sucks. <laughs> I hate it, but really, if you can if you can find the time to uh, do test shots on the spot, right? If you can find the time to you know, let's try it this way uh, with the camera here or the camera there. If you have time to do that then you have time to do this as well, because it's just as important, right? You want to make sure your actors are comfortable playing those characters, right? And you want to make sure that they feel like they're being spoken to the same way that you're maybe speaking to all of the equipment people, all of your crew. So be patient with them and be patient with yourself. Again, filmmaking is problem solving. I can't remember where I heard that from, but that, when I heard that for the first time, I was like, that makes the most sense because I've never, ever been on a set where there wasn't a problem that needed to be solved. So be patient. So step four, I think this is the last one, right? Spend just as much time talking with your actors as you do talking about and prepping equipment because I've noticed a lot of the time, a lot, you know, equipment's cool. Like, I love equipment too, right? You know, now, like, if I had access to this equipment, like, I'd be freaking out about it, too. Like, you know, I'd want to use, like, everything that I could, right? 
But those are things that you need to establish before you even start shooting, if, if you can, right? I know there's stuff like 77 hour film competitions, 52 hour film competitions where like, you know, it's not, you, you can't really like figure it out before because like you don't know what you're gonna do until you get the, the genre or whatever you guys end up writing and shooting. But if you can do all of your experimenting with any sort of equipment beforehand, before actors are called, um, and do the same thing with actors before they're, before they're called, days before, weeks before, the, the longer notice the better, like sit down with them and do the same thing that you do with equipment, test things out, talk to them, right? I find that uh, myself journaling as an actor, uh, having been on both sides, journaling as an actor was really important for me, for me to write down what my goals are, how I'm gonna accomplish those goals according to the dialogue, according to the action, right? And if you're a good director, you'll sit down with them and you'll either you know, you'll agree or you'll di disagree or, you know, come to a middle ground as a director with your actors and it'll just be better. It'll just, it'll just be a better product at that point. Basically, long story short, um, when your actors show up for you, show up for them. You don't want to just literally show up. Like, you want to you wanna show up with your A game. You want to be nice, right? You want to make these people your friends. And you want to make them feel heard and comfortable the same way that you do with crew members and every piece of equipment, right? It's a collaborative process and that includes actors. So make time, talk to them, and you'll have a better film. So I think that's basically it. I, I don't know if that ran short or not, but <laughs> I think that's basically it. So do you guys have any questions about anything? What was your hardest problem to solve on a set? Hmm. Hardest problem to solve on a set. Probably, it was actually um, Jake's class, um, motion graphics. Uh, <laughs> I, we had to make a short film as a, uh, as a group, uh, as a class. And um, we opted to do a horror film that took place at night and in the woods. And like I said, equipment was a lot shittier back then. <laughs> so, um, you know, they, everyone kind of decided I should direct it, right? But I didn't want to like, I didn't want to burst anyone's bubbles and say like, hey, shooting out in the m middle of the woods with, you know, really shitty little lights that, you know, have to run on a battery pack that's going to last 30 minutes. Like, it's not a good idea. It was also uh, November, so it was freezing, freezing cold. And I think it was a particularly cold November because like we all almost got frostbite. But um, anyway, we, we got to the woods and uh, as I was uh, setting up equipment, which like basically nobody helped me with, but um, as I was setting up equipment, um, all of the lights just gave out in 20 minutes. And I had to turn the lights on to see the equipment. So. I was like, well, shit, now what do we do? You know, we have to film this. This is the only day we can. This is the only day that we're all off. So um, I actually suggested that we just move the scene to a parking lot with street lamps in it. And it actually ended up making sense for the film itself. So uh, I was very proud of that decision, but we all did freeze our asses off and we suffered and it was horrible. But that was a hard problem to solve because everybody was panicking. Everybody was like, God, we're gonna get a zero on this. Like, we can't shoot it, it's too cold. And honestly, we didn't even shoot it all that night. At, at a certain point, I needed to get like some cutaway shots and I was just like, all right guys, we're, we're wrapping tonight. I'll come out here, I'll just get the cutaway shots myself. I'm not gonna make you guys suffer, right? So that's, that's another thing that I didn't necessarily include in uh, this slideshow is, be as accommodating as you can to not, not just your crew, but your actors too. Like they say <laughs> art is pain and suffering, but it doesn't have to be guys. Like we don't have to put them through this shit. You know, I didn't have to, if I could send my actors home early and then figure out a way to, you know, do those cutaways later and not even necessarily need my actors by then, then I found a way to do it. I found a way to shoot around it and plan ahead and think like, okay, it says in the script we do this, but if I shot it this way, I could get those cutaways later and then I don't need my actor here and they can go home and be warm. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that was the hardest problem I had to solve. Okay. Yes. Have you ever experienced anybody very stubborn or like very unwilling to take direction 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you, I guess, is there a way you deal with that? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's something that does come up. You know, I, I have I won't name any names because I you know, I still work with this person sometimes. Um, nobody here. Just uh, <laughs> just uh, go ahead and go ahead and uh, you know make you guys feel better. But yes, I have uh, worked with actors before who are very difficult when it comes to direction, or they 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 kind of have already like a set idea, and by the time I get around to talking with them, it's you know it's it's hard to push through. But really, it's. For me, I mean, and you know, it could depend person to person, right? You could be just dealing with an asshole. <laughs> I don't know, but for me, it was it was really um, finding a, a gentle way to nudge them in the right direction, and then I think eventually they'll get it and they'll understand why you're trying to point them in the direction that they are. So you know, um, it's kind of part of be nice or whatever, but um, you know, instead of Instead of like, let's say you do a take, and like in your head you're like, "Damn, man, this <laughs> this was an awful take," you know, like it, you know it might be a really bad take, and uh, you know nobody wants to say that to an actor, right? So I actually would recommend not, don't say it to your actor, right? You got to frame it in a way that makes them feel good about what they've done, because again, they're showing up for you, so show up for them in that way. So like something I like to do a lot. And I'm very grateful because thankfully I've worked with nothing but like good actors so far. But something I like to do a lot is um, if I really have like a problem with the direction a character's headed or a scene that they're, you know, they're taking it in a certain direction that I don't, you know, necessarily like agree with or you know, st stuff like that. Like something I like to do is I like to frame the direction in a positive way. So I, I always tell them like, you did great, we can make this even better, here's how. So that's, that's what I like to do, I like to frame it that way. Frame it for growth, not to tear people down, right? And if they're an asshole, I don't know that I have an, an answer for that, man. That sucks, I mean, you know, sometimes people are just assholes, or maybe, maybe sometimes people just don't get it, right? And then in situations like that, you just might have to pull them aside, you know, be like, hey, let's talk about this, let's have a conversation about it, let's see what, what the issue is here, because I, I think it should go this way, you think it should go this way, let's talk about why and find a middle ground. And that might be difficult, it might be a difficult conversation to have, but can I ask um, what, uh, can I ask any specifics about it? Like, Right. Friends, right. Which usually always works out. Right. I'm just curious of a hypothetical situation. Like if somebody was like, no, I don't want to do that, or I think you should be this way or something. Right. Just curious of your approach towards it, which would be similar to me. You know, that was great, but let's try it this way. I yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, I mean, judging by that, the one movie that I've seen of yours, dude, you got some good friends. Right. Just saying, dude. We looked out with just two Yeah. Movies. So good, so good, such a good movie. Any other questions? Yes, Luke. Uh, so does anything change in regards to character research and like table work and stuff when you're working with a script that you didn't write so as opposed to like when you wrote it, if like if you write something, you're creating the motivations and the drama and like whatever each character's goal is as you're writing it. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're handed a script, you have to find those things. Is there any difference in like doing the table work? In those situations? Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest difference there is that, uh, and I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but you you're gonna have to find something in that script to tie yourself to, right? I had a um, I had a friend who told me once that um, they, they're also a filmmaker and they had a buddy who wrote a screenplay and that buddy was very Christian and they were not Christian. And so they, their buddy was begging them to direct this film, right? And uh, he did, he did, he took it, he took the film and he directed it and he said he wasn't passionate about it at first and he couldn't really understand the character motivations because he wasn't Christian, right? 
And he said he found an aspect to it, something he related to and found a way to kind of make it his own vision, right? And uh, then communicated that with his actors, right? That's just, that's just one example. But the, I guess the way I would approach it is I actually had a situation like that. Um, it was actually the, uh, the, the story I was talking about earlier with shooting in the middle of the woods. Um, everybody kind of wanted to make a, um, a kind of straightforward horror film. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna sound ridiculous, and you're probably gonna have the same thought I did, but they wanted to make kind of a straightforward horror film about a cat person. Right. And to me, I'm just like, man, that's goosebumps. Like <laughs> that is that is goofy as hell. So, you know, you may read a screenplay and the only way that you can find an attachment to it. And, you know, writers may not like it sometimes. Um, but, you know, if you can talk to your writer and discuss this with them, then you should. But um, you may have to find a different angle from what the writer was intending to find that inspiration, or you might you might just have to dig deep down into that screenplay, right? And a lot of times your actors can also help with that kind of inspiration and uh, sparking that sense of direction and finding those character motivations and everything too, because your actors might have a strong tie to that screenplay that you don't, and hearing that might tie you into it too. So, any other questions? All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming to my workshop. Thank you so much. <laughs>